Hey guys, welcome back. This is episode 5 in my tutorial series on how to create a 2D game in Android Studio. And in this video, I'm going to be covering scene management. So, if you haven't noticed, our game panel class is starting to get quite crowded. Uh, and today, we're going to be working on fixing that. And we're going to do this by using uh, scenes. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to take all this code and instead of having all these cases inside the game panel, we're just going to feed that into whichever scene's active. So for example, this would be part of maybe a, a gameplay scene and we're just going to feed in all our touch events and all that stuff into the active scene and handle it there and kind of com uh, compartmentalize all this stuff. So to start us out, we're going to create a new interface so just java class switch this to interface and name it scene and we're gonna wanna add a few things in here we're gonna want to uh, make sure anything that's a scene is gonna have a update method so it's gonna be a public void update we also want to make sure it has a draw method and that's also gonna be a void and it's gonna take in a canvas And we want to have it have a terminate void and what this will basically do is uh, whenever the scene is supposed to end it will call this terminate method and it will uh, communicate with our scene manager telling it to switch the active scene so we're gonna need that and for now I believe this is all we need we may revisit it but until then go over here and create a scene manager that's just going to be a class and in our scene manager we're going to store a few things so there's going to be a private array list of scenes and that's just going to be called scenes and we're going to uh, store a int that's going to be called our active scene and we're going to come over here and say public scene manager and we're going to say we're going to do a few things we're going to say active scene equals zero uh, you can of course change this if you add a bunch of scenes to this array list and want it to start out on a different active scene but I'm just going to do zero and, and before we can really start filling this in we're going to need to create our first scene and for that I plan to make a gameplay scene which will handle basically what we've already created uh, and it's going to implement scene so it's of type scene and of course we get an error because we have to implement some stuff so I'm going to implement terminate and it should just suggest them all so you can just use your arrow keys to go down and enter to have it auto fill that in for you and so now we have all our required methods and we are good to go but here we want to store a private scene manager and we'll just call it manager and right here we're going to want to do a public gameplay scene and it's going to take in a scene manager and it's going to set that right here later on I may end up uh, changing the scene uh, interface to an abstract class so that we can require this constructor but for now I'm just gonna put that there because we really are gonna need to always have this manager argument passed in so that we can in our terminate method uh, force it to switch scenes and for the gameplay scene what we're gonna do is come over here to scene manager and we're actually gonna also add here public a public void set scene and it's gonna take in an active scene so an integer and it's gonna set our active scene to that uh, and now we're gonna come over here and say manager dot set scene and it's gonna be zero and actually you know a better thing to do I would think 
Um, this may not be the way to go, but it definitely actually may make this easier. We're gonna do a make this just a static value, uh, and just out of convention, I'm gonna come over here and refactor and rename this, and I'm going to make it all caps. Okay, and then what we actually can do here is get rid of this constructor. Whoops. Get rid of this constructor right here. We don't need to store a scene manager anymore. And we can just say scene manager dot act active scene equals zero. And that will handle that for us. So we can get rid of this set scene thing because this is now just a static variable. And so now that's taken care of. And what we're going to come over here and do is just say scenes.add. And we're going to say new gameplay scene. And that will be set to index 0. And what we're going to come over here and do is create our update method. And we're going to create a draw method. Uh, you'll probably you probably notice that almost all our classes are going to have these methods unless they're just um, representing objects or like storing data. But if we're actually having them displayed on a screen, they're going to have both these. Uh, and then in this update method, we just want to do scenes dot get active active scene and then we're just gonna say dot update we're gonna call that and then we're gonna do here scenes dot get active scene and then we're gonna call draw and now we actually have to add a few more methods we're gonna do a public void and it's gonna be receive touch and it's gonna take in a touch event I believe that's what it is or no motion event yes motion event event and what that's going to do here is uh, send that information to our active scene and before we do that we have to come over here into scenes and say public void receive touch it's going to take in a motion event and we'll just call that event. Now come over here to our gameplay scene, which now has an error, and we have to implement this method. Do that right here. Go ahead and save it. Uh, and now in receive touch, we're just gonna do, as you might expect, we're gonna get our active scene, and then we're gonna pass in that information to our active scene. Great, so now that should be taken care of. All that we have to do is actually implement the important stuff in here and for that we are going to go over here into game panel and we're gonna actually just kinda copy and paste all this um, uh, I guess gameplay logic we have put inside the game panel and we're gonna put it into gameplay scene so we're gonna keep this return true statement and we're just gonna cut out this switch statement but we're gonna have to implement some stuff there in a sec but I'll do that after we've kind of finished all this pasting so we got that uh, pasted in there and let's see here cut out all this information and we're gonna go and put that in our constructor so we gotta make a constructor for this class okay that's just asking us to import everything as you can tell we have a bunch of errors because we have some uh, instance variables in game panel which we haven't pasted over yet but don't worry we're going to take care of that um, take this public void reset paste it in here let's see what else we have so an update we want to all this as well and 
and draw we want let's see here I'm also gonna take in this draw canvas color and make it white because in different scenes we may want the background different colors so I'm not gonna make this happen every frame it'll depend on the scene so I'm gonna include that in what I'm uh, cutting and pasting so we're gonna take that and put that in draw as well just import whatever it's recommending and now take draw center text paste that or copy that whole method and paste it in here save it and now we're all good except for our instance variables and as you can see they're gray because we no longer reference them that's good uh, we just want to cut that all and put that right up here into our ga uh, game play scene so now this is good we have all the logic built into this gameplay scene rather than the game panel and now if we wanted to create like a main menu scene we wouldn't have to add a whole like if statement case to check which scene it is and then include all the logic in this class too we could create a different class that could just be main menu scene and then just have it uh, swap between which scene it's actually running in this scene manager so that's good now we just have to make sure that scene manager is getting called so we're just going to create uh, create a scene manager over here in our constructor we're going to just say manager equals new scene manager and over here and on touch event we're going to just call scene manager or I think I called it manager yep and we're gonna say receive touch and we're gonna pass in event and then we're gonna go over here to update and we're gonna say manager dot update save that and lastly we're gonna do manager dot draw and pass in the canvas so now we obviously have cleaned this up a lot the code uh, I mean is still takes up just as many lines it's just way better organized for when we want to implement new scenes and we're gonna go ahead and run this and make sure there's no errors but I believe we should be good alright guys so we're up and running uh, let's see what happens here we are and I believe Oh, I forget you have to double click when you're using the emulator for some reason, but I believe everything works as in, uh, as expected. Let me just go through once more because it looked like the score maybe wasn't doing anything. Uh, nope, it's working. So, I mean, that's to be expected because all we really did is copy and paste. And I realize this video is going to be a short one, but I just wanted to uh, show you guys this kind of method. And I plan to, in future videos, implement a main, main, main menu screen and maybe make the game over screen its own scene. But it's really good just to set this uh, infrastructure up early on because otherwise it can be a complete mess to switch over to. Uh, and now that we have this in place, we can make a lot of tasks easier in the future. In the next video, I plan on maybe um, showing how to draw textures. I've seen a few comments uh, su suggesting that and wanting to see that. So I plan on doing that. And until then, thanks for watching and stay tuned.